You're listening to the Chronicles of Living Podcast, where we talk to everyday people about everyday things in the past, present, and future. Now let's talk. Do it Wednesday. Let me finish listening to our boy. We got to get motivated. We are learning, always turning. Later, cannot stop the time. Always merging into lanes that better suit us as we ride. Switch it up. Switching to gear, let's go. As we climb up the hill, don't slow down. Pedal a little more. It's working, it's in control Your wheels are turning a little more Going higher and up the notch Keep it steady, don't watch the clock Go round, round. This is Adion Your dream pusher Your lifeguard Saving you From drowning Drowning in yourself Drowning in this world Drowning In some real Ish. That's right, y'all. Life is a cycle. I really love this song because it it really touches on the fact that we can just change it at any time. And just like he said, our mind is is just constantly is is thinking, is is climbing. We're climbing. You know, don't stop. Don't stop. That's what it's about. And um, today's topic is who is looking back at you in your mirror? Who? Who's looking back at you? Who's looking back at you today that wasn't looking back at you a year ago, five years ago, ten years ago. Are you happy with that person? Or are you mad? Are you sad at that person? That's what we're talking about today. And this it's Chronicles of Living podcast show, the show for everyday people doing everyday things, living everyday life. You know what's normal, folks? <laughs> we just doing a damn thing. I had to take out uh, trying because y'all know how I feel about that word. We, we are doing the damn thing <laughs> all the time. <laughs> if, even if it's not so great, we still doing the damn thing. <laughs> Because once it's done, it's done. But you can flip the script at any time and change the way your cycle goes in the future. You can do that. So, yeah, I mean, this title, as I said, sometimes they just come from out of nowhere. I was getting ready to go with another one today in... And it was almost on the same line. I'm not going to say the title because I probably will do it later on down the line. But um, 
I had a long day because I just came back home from, you know, the holidays, going down to my family's house to spend some time, spend some time with family, spend some time with my son. And um, it was very interesting to visit. It was it was a good visit. Um, I got a chance to talk, you know, with my loved ones, but I also got a chance to look at myself and think about the way my mindset was this time last year, this time five years ago. And um, I really reflected on the person that I'm becoming. And I love it. I love it. I love the person I am becoming day by day. I noticed that through conversation uh, with my family, some was like, you know, when you start growing in certain areas of your life, certain conversations don't resonate with you anymore. If it's something like negative, you kind of don't want to really hear it. You might sit there, whatever, but you don't really want to hear it. You really want to start just keep hearing the positive. You want to, I mean, everything is not positive every day. Everything is not flowers and, you know, butterflies, but we can create that for ourselves at any time, you know, no matter how grim it looks. And y'all know I've been on these same type of topics for the last few shows because we're coming into the new year and, you know, it was heavy on my heart to make sure that we have these type of topics that's going to clear us in every area of our life, our mind, our body, soul, spirit, you know, get rid of the clutter before you go into a new year, a whole new beginning. You know, next year can be a real, a whole new beginning for you if you allow it to. I've had so many different shows when it comes to looking at yourself. And I stay on that topic a lot because that is, that's it, really. Once you become who you really are, I mean, truly are, who you were created to be without folding, without letting people put doubt in your mind, your heart, without having blockage of any type, you know, whether it be unforgiveness, hurt, pain, things from the past, shame. Once you let go of all of that and you go back to your mirror, and I say your mirror, the title, actually, I was playing around with the title, but that is the way it came out at the end. You know, it's just like, who is looking back at you in your mirror, not nobody else's mirror? Because, see, I think the way, I think I put that on my heart to say it in that way, who's looking back at you in your mirror? Because if I would have said in the mirror, then it could have been anybody's mirror, which means that's open to the way anybody views you, but how you view yourself. So that's the difference in just that one word, your, you know what I'm saying? And we go through life modeling to appear in everybody else's mirror. Let me say that again. We go through life modeling to appear in everybody else's mirror. So what I mean by that is that throughout the years, whether it be stemming from our childhood and and just our environment and people around us put things in our subconscious about who we are, or whether it be just, you know, you going through life, wishing you could be somebody else, um, seeing what everybody else has or how everybody else is doing and wanting that for yourself instead of wanting what is yours, what is meant for you, what is meant for your family. You know, this world, this life 
is so complex at times, you know, and you really can get sucked in. This is why I say I'm your lifeguard and I'm trying to say, and I'm saving you. I'm saving you, not trying. I'm saving you. That's the energy I'm putting out. That I am saving you through the words that I speak, that spirit speaks through my mouth. Because this is not me speaking to you. This is my being, my spirit talking to you. That's what I pray before I come on. Because I'm still working on my own issues. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So you have to start really looking at yourself in your mirror and asking yourself, okay, Seriously, we we get dressed every day and we look at ourselves to make sure our hair's right, you know, our face, our clothes is fitting nicely or whatever like that. We go sometimes and we might change a couple of times before we even walk out the door because we're worried about how we look as we should. Um, We don't want to walk out the door looking all crazy, but, you know, the thing is when you look in that mirror, and look in your mirror and you're changing your clothes, who are you changing the clothes for? Are you changing them for you, for your comfortability, for your feeling, for your vibe that day, your mood for that day? Because I truly believe that fashion is mood. You know, we we put on how we feel that day. Most of the time, unless we have a job that we got to wear a uniform, but even with wearing a uniform, people tend to do something to just pretty much put their signature on it. They maybe might wear a little scarf around their neck or a hat or something just to kind of give them their own identity within that uniform, you know. Um, But nevertheless, when you are looking in a mirror, looking at your mirror, Who are you dressing for? If you're a man and you have a certain haircut or you, you know, you shave or you grow the beard, who are you doing that for? Are you doing it for yourself? Are you doing it for other attention? You know, if you're a woman and you wear makeup or you don't wear makeup, are you wearing makeup for yourself because it makes you feel good and beautiful? You know, it makes you feel beautiful inside or are you wearing the makeup because you don't think you're beautiful enough without it or are you not wearing makeup because somebody else told you not to and they said that's what they didn't like but you want to wear just a little bit just to bring some color to you or whatever these are the things we don't think about we just Look in our mirror before we walk out that door, and we that's what we do. We just look in the mirror for just to make sure our clothes are fitting right, just to make sure that our hair is right. But when we start looking in, when you start looking in your mirror and analyzing who you are, do you like what you see? How did you feel about the person that you're looking at this time? last year, 10 years ago, have you grown? How is your character right now? You know, because at different times of our life, our character grows to a different level. And depending on our environment, depending on our surroundings, it can either gravitate towards that or if we're a strong enough wielded person, it just your characteristic just grows into and forms into who you're aiming to become, whether it's good or bad, you know. And um, I was watching this movie to try to wind down. I took a little nap before I um, start this podcast. It was a little Christmas movie, but when it's Christmas movie, it was interesting. It was um. I can't think of the name right now, but it was this older man and he used to, he, 
it wasn't his job. It wasn't his job to be Santa Claus, but this was something that was his joy. Every year he wanted to play Santa Claus for the kids and he got really, really sick and his daughter just would not have it. it. Didn't He didn't want, I mean, she didn't want him to play Santa Claus because of his health. And um, the department store wanted him to play Santa Claus for their bottom line. And then there was another guy that was a scam artist and he was scamming people out of their money and playing. I don't know if you know anything about, it's a game called Three Card Molly where you got to guess which card is the right card or you lose your money. So the moral of the story, I didn't get to finish watching it because I fell asleep. But what I liked about it was that the old man, he prayed, you know, was like, I just want to play Santa Claus one last time for that one kid that might need that inspiration or whatever. And that was the reason why he really loved playing Santa Claus. He was well off. He he was a lawyer, as a matter of fact. Oh, no, he was a judge. But this was something that he did every year to give back. And then the scam artist, he kept talking about how he wanted a million dollars and so I guess the the, the ghost of Christmas <laughs> came and told the scam artist, you know, I can give you a chance at redemption for all that you've been doing. It's not good. I've been watching you to lend your body for three weeks to this old man. that want to play Santa Claus because he's not healthy enough to play Santa Claus. So he was trying to answer, well, he was answering the prayer of the guy that was playing Santa Claus, that wanted to play Santa Claus. So long story short, um, the guy agreed because the ghost of Christmas showed the money and all of this stuff. So he agreed. And the story is supposed to go where he really learns the importance of giving back instead of stealing, instead of taking all the time. You know, and then a guy that's playing Santa Claus gets to see life through his eyes as a scam artist. I haven't finished the story, like I said, but I just like that. The fact that sometimes when you look in in your mirror, you can see somebody that you don't even know. You know, you're in this body, but you're not who you really want to be and you have the chance to change it at any time, you know, but sometimes we make it so complicated for ourselves. Sometimes we get so far in our thought pattern and we think that we're not capable of changing to become the person that we really want to be. Sometimes we think that it's too hard or either we might think, Oh, well, what's the point on changing? Um, because, People are fine with me the way I am, or they might say, what's the point of change? I mean, you might say, what's the point of changing because people don't care about me or people already have drawn their own perception of me. So what's the point? I've had people draw their own perception of me and I still do. And I know it. And I go around these people. You know what I'm saying? And what I found is that when people build their own perception of you, when they judge you, they don't know any better. They really don't, you know, Um, because most of the time they're not all together themselves, but yet they're looking at you to try to relieve some of the things that's wrong within themselves. To try to take the attention off some of the things that they know they need to fix within their own lives, you know? And that's all a part of not taking people personal. Because we can all look in our own mirror and always know that we need some adjustments. We that's our whole goal. This this experience in this world, in this life. It's for us to grow. It's for us to learn. It's for us to become better beings. It's for us to learn how to coexist. 
in a world that's so different with all these different people, different cultures, different religions, different colors, different races, everybody is different. And so from day to day, we have to figure out who we want to roll with, who we want to be bothered with. And then at the end of the day, when you come home, sometimes if you're around the wrong people, if you're around the wrong type of conversations, you can feel so weighed down. You could feel like, where did my energy go? go? You know? And I have that problem sometimes, but I'm learning how to mute, (laughs) push the mute button on my ears, but still be there, still be present. If I'm in a situation that I'm not cool with the conversation, there's really nowhere to go at that time. I have learned how to press mute and just enjoy the bits of the conversation that I, that I want to. But a lot of us don't have that strength. A lot of us will absorb all of a conversation or, you know, whatever is going on around us and then allow it to become a part of us. Meaning like you could be around certain people, like you could go to lunch um, every day. I mean, every day you work and sit with a certain group of people. But those group of people, I mean, that group of people is not really you, but you feel like, well, there's really no one here that's like me. And I just want to be around some people, you know? And so you sit around that group on a deli and that group of people just happen to be a negative group of people. I mean, the the way they view life, the the way they view people is always negative. That's all they have to say out of their mouth. And so you sit around that group of people time and time again. And even though you are a kind-hearted person, your spirit is bright, as I said in one of my other shows, they can dim your light. Enough of that going in and not enough of your positive going out can start changing your whole fabric of life, your whole fabric of who you really are. And then you'll start acting out in the same way that that group of people is acting out because that's what you're around. And I constantly tell y'all like energy is everything. So just like whatever you put out, it comes back, you can absorb energy as well. So if you're around a lot of people that just always spread love and you are a negative person, but you constantly around people that always keep a positive mindset, they want to spread love, they want to see the world become a better place. After a while, you're not going to be able to help it. You're going to start feeling the same way. Some chords are going to just be hit within you. And all of a sudden, you probably was a person that didn't love animals. And you'll find yourself smiling at a dog walking down the street. You was a person that never loved somebody touching you or coming too close to you in your space or hugging you. And next thing you know, you hugging everybody you see. This is how it goes. You know? I think it was, I read something or even I heard an interview with um, Jada and Will Smith. And I can remember her saying, I think they was asking, how do they work everything out? You know, with them both being Hollywood people and then, you know, men, women coming at them. And she was saying that she just tell them every day, you know, make sure you are able to look in the mirror when you come back. She said something to that effect. I might not be saying it word for word, but I found that very interesting because that is true. When you leave out the house, whatever you choose to do within that day, one day can change your life forever. You can make one choice, one decision 
that will change your life forever for the good or the bad. So it's like you go out the house. When you come back, whatever you did in the course of that day, and you come back in to brush your teeth for the night, wash your face or whatever like that, you got to look in the mirror. Are you going to be happy with what you see? Are you going to be proud of the things that you did today when you walked out the door throughout the course of the day? Are you going to be happy with the way you added to the world, to people's lives in whichever way, you know, rather be, you know, helping to opening up the door for somebody that's going in the building, holding the door when you see somebody coming, you know, little things. It's, it's, it's not the big thing. Sometimes it's the little things. Helping an elderly person. You know, giving up, if you want a train or a plane or a bus or whatever, helping um, an elderly person that comes on and giving them your seat. I could remember when I used to catch the bus a lot, you know, some years ago, and I could remember always making sure I got up for a person that was older than me. And I also could remember watching men. Grown men stay in their seats when they see a person that's older, I mean, like a frail person, and they just let them stand there. You know, I could remember seeing that and like wondering, like, wow, like, you don't see that person? Like, (laughs) they need to see more than you. But that's all a reflection of who we grow to be. That's all a reflection of what we were taught or either just our characteristic and who we decided, like, listen, sometimes you can have a good mother, a good father, a good family that raised you. And you can just decide that, you know what, I still want to be rotten. I still want to be a taker. You know? It's really on us. We make our own decisions. Nobody can change our makeup. Nobody can change our characteristic but us. We are the ones that got to go to sleep with us, that got to live with us, that got to look in our mirror as individuals. It's, It's on us. So when we decide that, you know what, I can be better than I was last year. This is how I react to certain people, to certain things, to certain words. Last year, I'm not going to react that way. I'm going to react this way the next time something like that comes up or, you know, I'm in that type of environment. I'm going to choose to remove myself. I'm going to choose to, because you don't have to stay, but sometimes We'll stay in a certain atmosphere because we don't feel the power to go. We don't feel like we have the power within ourselves to go, to leave a certain group of people alone because we don't want to be alone. Some of us feel that way. Some of us can't be alone. I could be alone all day. (laughs) I'm a social butterfly, but I can get my alone space, my me space, whatever you want to call it. I love it. I love it. I love it. (laughs) But some people just, for some reason, they can't be alone. And really, I think that's something within them that's deeply rooted that they haven't addressed yet. Why is it that you don't want to be alone? Why is it that... You feel the need to be around any group of people, no matter how they act. And knowing that that's not you, that's not who you are, but yet you're going to be around those, you know, I don't want to say type of people, but that group of people, you know what I mean? You got to really, really search deep inside. And I I guess I'm really on this topic because as I talk to people throughout this year, this has been the main problem. 
so many people, including me, hold on. Or sometimes it's not the fact that you hold on. It's it's the fact that you have deep-rooted issues and you don't even know until something happens and then all of a sudden it shows itself. And then you're like, oh, wow, how... Where did that come from? Why did I say that? Why did I react that way to this person? Why do I feel this way when that person talks to me? Because it's something that's deeply rooted that you haven't addressed yet. And you need to address it so that you can start walking into that person that you want to look at in the mirror, in your mirror, every day and just smile that every time you look in your mirror you're just so proud of you you're so proud of you and who you have become that is some work y'all that is work for all of us i'm sorry we all have the journey to walk that we can be a little better than we was yesterday, than we was five years ago, than we was 10 years ago. I know when I look back at my life, I'm like, whoa, (laughs) that song that used to be out. I don't even know the words, but it, but every chorus he was like, it's like, whoa. (laughs) Um, you really need to look back before you go into next year, start looking back. And y'all know, I say, Stop rewinding the tape. And I always talk about stop thinking about the past. But when you're talking about things like this, you have to dissect your past to know where you're going in your future. Because you got to dissect it so that you can pick away the parts that it's not allowed to go with you in your future and your present moment. Because really, it's about living in the present. It's really not about so much looking towards the future. Because the present is going to create your future. Your present, uh, how I want to say, your present actions is going to create your future. So that's why it's important to live in the present instead of, looking in the past and looking behind you and still carrying the stuff, the baggage that you don't want to follow you. It is what it is. The past is what it is. You cannot change it. And I know I say this on a lot of shows, but I need that to get deeply rooted in your mind. You cannot change the past. What happened in the past, what you did in the past, rather it was something that you was not proud of, rather it was something that you felt like you disappointed yourself, or rather it was something that you felt like somebody else disappointed you, hurt you, you just can't change it. And this is a lot of our issues. This is where a lot of our issues come from because we hold on and we just like we keep rewinding that tape like this happened to me and oh I you know I took this on and this and where I'm at now is because of that in the past no where you're at now is right where you need to be because where you're at now no matter if it's where you want to be or if it's not where you want to be If you're listening to the show right now, then this is the moment you can change where you're going. This is the moment you can look and say, you know what? I got this habit. This is a bad habit. This habit is not serving me for my benefit. Today, you can say that to yourself and say, you know what? I've been smoking cigarettes for 20 years. Are these cigarettes benefiting me? Are they benefiting my life? Are they benefiting my health? You know what? I'm going to stop. And I know I'm saying that like, bam, yeah, uh, that's not easy for everybody. But you can take your little steps. I remember 
somebody that used to smoke, I can't think about who it is right now, but somebody I knew that used to smoke, they wanted to stop smoking. And what they did was they used to smoke a pack a day. And so they started, when they bought their pack, they would take out two, or I think it might have been one. Each pack that they bought, they would take up, take out um, a few more and just tear them up so that even though they're smoking a pack a day, it's not a full pack. So by the time they got done, they were like training their system to be satisfied with the amount that was still in the pack. I thought that was very clever because they were weaning themselves off. They faced the reality that, okay, this is not something I'm strong enough to just go cold turkey and just throw the cigarettes away. But what I can do is just work on it little by little each day, one cigarette at a time. And I can't remember how many was in a pack. So say it was 30 in a pack. So each day, they bought their pack, they would take one cigarette away. So you figure by the end of 30 days, they're down to one cigarette. You know what I'm saying? That is some mental stuff right there. That's something that you got to discipline yourself and you're disciplining your subconscious at the same time. And your conscious is, you know, kicking in and telling you, no, you only have... 29 cigarettes. So this is all you can smoke today. You know? So if you can just take that scenario and whatever habit you have, whether it is you go and you eat fast food every day and say you go to lunch every day and every day you're going out and you're eating fast food. Well, there's seven days in a week. Or if you go on just the five days when you're working or whatever like that, there's five days in a week. You can cut it down for one month and say, okay, I'm only going to eat fast food for one time out of the week. Then the next month, cut it down. I mean, um, four days out of out of the week. Next month, cut it down to three days out of the week. Next month, cut it down to two days out of the week. You know what I'm saying? And you see, I'm giving you 30 days. To cut the habit. Because when you're used to doing something, if you're not a strong-willed person, it will take time. And that's okay. So when you come back and you look in your mirror for that day, you will feel good about who you see looking back at you. Because what you will see is a reflection of your tenacity, of your perseverance to push through and to become that better person. You will look at the person that smoked less cigarettes that day, that want to get the fast food for less days of the week, you know? And that's how your smile just gets bigger and bigger. That's how you start becoming proud of the person that you're looking at in your mirror. Because you're working little by little. Everybody usually looks at the issues in in their lives as the bigger picture. Like if you're in debt. Like when I used to do mortgage, I used to tell my clients, you know, that had some debt to pay off. I would tell them, you know, start with the smallest bill first. When people have debt, they look at the whole picture, the debt, and that's what makes them sick. That's what makes it seem impossible to get rid of. But if you just take it and you just dissect it little by little, you pay the smallest bill first. You know, you might be 50000 in debt, but say you got a bill that's $500. And you just, every week you, or every other week, however you get paid, you work on that $500 bill. And before you know it, that's gone. Then the next one is a thousand and you do it the same way. You don't worry about getting a whole thousand to pay it all. You just do what you can. Rather it be 25 or $50 each pay, you pay towards that bill. You pay towards that 
trade line, you know? And after a while, it's going to become habit that you are handling your business. You're taking care of your responsibilities. You're going to feel so much lighter with each thing that you pay off. And these are the things that we can do that's not hard. We just make it hard. And I'm just putting out those figures. But, I mean, if you only got $5, $10, whatever you have, as long as you're working towards the goal, that is what life is about. Working towards the goal the best way you can with what you have to work towards the goal. Stop worrying about what you don't have. Stop worrying about um, how your hair is if you want it to be this way and it won't go that way. Like my hair is naturally curly. But when people see it's so funny when I came back, I had um, straightened it out when I was on vacation. And most of the time I wear it natural when I'm working at the retreat and stuff and while I'm, you know, living here. And um it was so funny because the people that never saw my hair straight was like, whoa, you look like a different person. It's like drastic change. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's the same thing. When we look in the mirror, we change our hairstyle. We change um, the type of clothing we wear. We almost become a different person. Rather be good or bad. You know, you might, if you put on some skimpy clothes, if you're a woman, you put on a skimpy clothes, you feel real, real sassy, real, you know, I don't want to try to attempt to say this word, promiscuous. Prom- I'm going to just leave it alone. Let me just leave it alone. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm trying to say. But you feel it's different. But if you're used to going to work, you have a job that's, Um, where you got to wear a suit every day, that's a whole different mindset than putting on something to go to a club. But at the end of the day, again, you choose what's looking back at you in that mirror, in your mirror. You are in charge of you. So don't let nobody else tell you how you should look in your mirror. Don't look in everybody else's mirror. Look in your mirror and decide what you need to do to keep smiling back at you. Decide what you need to do. Not what everybody else needs to do for you, but what do you need to do to allow yourself to smile back at you? Every time you look in your mirror, that's what I want y'all to do. That's what I'm doing. This is what I'm working on. So like I tell y'all, whatever I talk to y'all um, about, I'm talking to myself as well. I need these messages too, to remind myself to continue on those paths of the topics. You know what I mean? So... We're at our mark, and although I could go on and on, I try to keep it around this time so I won't bore y'all. <laughs> but um, definitely, y'all, going into this new year, start, you know, questioning yourself. Do you like what you see in your mirror? Are you better? Did you, you know, fall backwards? How have you improved yourself for yourself, not for everybody else, but for you? This is what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. Life is about what you choose to experience. Rather it's good or bad. If it's good or bad, it always is going to have repercussions. You're going to always get results. So you decide what your repercussions are going to be. You decide how everything is going to come back to you. Do you want blessings or do you want curses? Do you want to feel good? Do you want to feel bad? That's your power. You decide that. 
That's your mind. You can think that thought. Your thoughts are power. And I tell y'all this all the time. So gain control of your thoughts. Because your thoughts become actions. And your actions will become results. And your results create your character. So I'm going to leave y'all with that. Okay? And... Just like I said, this is, you can do it Wednesdays. So you can, when we get, when you get done listening, go look in the mirror. Just stare at yourself for a good while. Look at you as a whole and ask yourself, are you happy with you? Not because of everybody else, be because of you, because of who you want to be, who you are striving to become, how you want to add to this world, how you want to add to people and take it easy on yourself. Do not be judgmental on yourself or about yourself, but just examine and just write down the things that you know you could become better at to be able to smile at you every time you look at you in your mirror. (laughs) So I hope y'all enjoyed today's show. And I really love y'all. I really do. And I I wish that I can see all of you that listens and just give y'all a big hug. I wish, well, who, who knows the way this technology is? I wish I could come through the computer and just give you a big hug hug, a real tight hug, and just let you know that you are loved. You are loved. Rather, you see it for yourself. You are loved. There are people out there that really and truly love you. And maybe you haven't came across those people where you can identify that love. But trust me, there are people all around spirits all around god is here and he loves you no matter what you did in the past he still loves you that's why he gave us free will to give us time to get it together you know so don't be so hard on yourself when you look in your mirror but definitely duly note what you want to change and take your time Cause that's what we have. We have time, but don't take time for granted. Okay. So until Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, this is a Dion, your dream pusher, your life guard, saving you from drowning in yourself, drowning in your thoughts, drowning in everybody else's mirror. <laughs> And this is Chronicles of Living podcast show. And I really, truly love you guys. And I just want to wish y'all happy holidays. I didn't get a chance to see all my family. Everybody was doing their own thing. But I wish everybody happy holidays. Spread love this year. Okay? And beyond. Please. Okay? I love you guys. And, um... Until Sunday, peace. Thank you for listening to Chronicles of Living, where we talk to everyday people about everyday things in the past, present, and future. And if you are pursuing your dreams, I'm proud of you. Because the best part of life is when you decide to live. To keep up with us, please visit chroniclesofliving.com. Until next time, this is Adion, your dream pusher. I love you guys.